So those are different, you know, PR campaigns which we've done. You know, PR is something that allows small brands to compete with big brands. Um, PR is something that allows you to make a lot of noise and do it in a targeted fashion. Um, you know, one of the things that I'll tell you for those types of companies is, you know, Obama or you know Romney, Gingrich, whichever your choice is, needs 51 percent, right? Hit Water doesn't need 51 percent. Bob Stein also doesn't need 51 percent. For that matter, 5WPR doesn't need 51 percent. You give me 10 percent of the you know US PR market, I'm thrilled, jumping up and down, right? Coca-Cola needs 51 percent, right? Or more. Microsoft needs 51 percent. There is a you know there's a lot of value in the PR business to picking your niches, finding your niches, and knowing where you want to be. Um, you know, I think you know when I talk about I talk about it in the book a little bit, but you know, there's a lot of people who don't use PR the right way. You know, the military, for example. When's the last time you see the military on TV? You see the military on TV, you know, when these guys urinated on the body of, um, when the soldiers urinated on the body of the Taliban recently, right? We all remember that. And we all remember pictures from, you know, tying up these guys in Guantanamo Bay and beating them, right? And you remember the, you know, gay soldier debates, right? All of these sorts of things are all things you all nod your head about, right? But when's the last time on Thanksgiving Day you saw a, you know, three kids crying around the, crying around the, you know, the Christmas tree because daddy's in Iraq? You don't see it, right? When's the last time you saw that college football, you know, the high school football player who was 18 years old who went off to war to protect his country? You don't see it, right? So I think that in many ways, you know, the military in this country doesn't do a good job of telling our, you know, telling us that, you know, the people in the military, you know, these guys who aren't just the guys who are urinating on the body of the Taliban, but they're Jessica from Maine and David from Dallas and, you know, this is the beautiful blonde, you know, cheerleader, and this is the president of the Black Student Union, and this is, and you pick different demographics and different ethnic groups and different people who represent America to talk to them in a positive way, so that you know you're getting a positive message of the military. You know, you talk about travel. So in my business, I travel a lot. I travel a lot. The worst thing in the world. It's awful and brutal. You walk on a plane, you think that you, you know, you think that they're doing you a favor by taking your money. They make you feel like a terrorist, you know. It's just, it's an awful, awful, awful experience to fly. Awful. From taking off your shoes, to being delayed, to being yelled at, it's just awful, right? So, when's the last time you saw an ad for Amtrak? When's the last time you thought something positive about Amtrak? You want to know how hard it is to get on Amtrak? You want to take a train now to D.C.? You can leave here 15 minutes from now and get on a train to D.C. in about 12 seconds. And guess what? You have to take off your shoes, and you have to take off your coat. And you don't need to show 19 pieces of ID. And you don't need to, you know, plug this off and plug this on and all the rest. <coughs> and in the grand scheme of things, you'll be there in the same amount of time. You want to take another, you know, car services, right? To go from here to D.C. or here to Boston to fly. So let's say, you know, how long does it take us to get to the board now? 45 minutes? We agree, right? Yeah. To get through security, all the rest, another hour? Yeah. So let's say it's an hour 45, right? The flight is, let's say, 45 minutes. It's two and a half hours. To land there, get off the plane another half hour, it's four hours, we agree? Plus or minus? You can drive door to door in four hours. What's more pleasant? Getting in the car when you want and putting, you know, hanging up your jacket like a human being in the car. And by the way, you need to stop for the bathroom. Nobody's going to scream at you like you're in second grade about getting up to go to the bathroom. You know, and none of these things, and by the way, the cost is probably about the same. If you're going two people, it's about the same. So one of the things that I talk about is, you know, categories which really miss the PR, you know, the PR opportunity. If I owned, you know, Carmel Car Service, right? I would do that ad all day of the week, saying I will beat you door to door. You know, you go to LaGuardia, you come with me, and I'll beat you without breaking the speed limit. And by the way, you'll have a much more pleasant experience because nobody's going to cost you a TSA. Your odds of being delayed are much less. Who wouldn't take it, right? Make sense, guys? Yeah. So even if I don't convince 100% of the people, I'll certainly convince some of the people. Because you're playing off of the awful experience of flying. And, it, you know, again, I fly a lot. It's just awful. Um, now, is that valid? You know, if you're going to L.A. tomorrow, it's not going to work. No. But within a 500-mile distance, 300 to 500 miles, you know, nobody thinks of flying. Nobody thinks of, you know, of not flying from San Diego to Vegas or, you know, really short distances. You're just thinking of flying. You don't think of driving. You don't think of the train. And it's such a more pleasant experience. So to me, it's a category which really misses out. Um, 